Monty! Monty Bodkin! Good of you to come and see me off. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't know you were seeing me. Oh, the family's sending me to some job in Canada. Reggie, you want a job in Canada? Well, no, but they've cut off my allowance. So, what are you doing here? I'm sailing too. Why? Because Gertrude's broken off the engagement. Gertrude? Butterwick. Your cousin. Oh, that Gertrude. She's going to America with that hockey club of hers or some match or other. And it seemed the only way to get to talk to her was to sail too and have it out with her during the voyage. You're engaged to Gertrude? Was. I didn't know. It wasn't exactly noised abroad. Why not? There were wheels within wheels. Hmm. You know her blasted father by any chance? Oh, but of course you do. He's your uncle. Yeah, no good trying to hush that up. But when you say no him, well, we don't mingle much. He doesn't approve of me. He doesn't approve of me either. He didn't exactly call me a waster. No, he does me, frequently. He asked me how I earned my living. I told him I didn't earn my living because a recent aunt had left me 300,000 quid. Ha, <laughs> you had him there. I thought so too. But he looked puff-faced and said he'd never allow his daughter to marry a man who had no earning capacity. <sighs> I know those words. An earning capacity was what he was always beefing about me not having. I remember one occasion... Shall I go on? Oh, rather. Yes, do. So, he insisted I get a job and hold it down for a year. What did he do? My Uncle Gregory wangled me one as assistant editor of Tiny Tots, a magazine for the nursery and home. I got fired. Well, of course. And then? He got Lord Emsworth to take me on as his secretary. I got fired. Well, of course. And then? Well, I rather took things into my own hands. There was all that business at Blanding's Castle last year. Yes, I heard about that. Lord Emsworth's pig got kidnapped. Mm, that's right. And while all that was going on, I met a fellow called Pilbeam, whom old Emsworth brought in to find his pig, who owns a private inquiry agency, and... The pig owns a private inquiry no, agency? not the pig. Percy Pilbeam owns a private inquiry agency. Oh. So, I gave him a thousand quid to take me on for a year. You aren't telling me you're a ruddy sleuth. Maharaja's rubies and measuring bloodstains and all that. As a matter of fact, Reggie, they don't give me much to do. I'm just down in the books as a skilled assistant. Well, if you ask me, that sounds like the happy ending. What went wrong? I don't know. I went to Cannes for a bit of a holiday. Now, nobody could have been matier than Gertrude when I left. And then a telegram comes, breaking the engagement and giving no reasons. It's inexplicable. I came back at once and called at her house. She wouldn't see me. I rang her up on the telephone and drew nothing but a butler with adenoids. So, I thought the only thing to do was to sail to and have it out with her. Hmm. Do you know what I think? Yes? You've lost your glamour. My what? She's gone off you. Gone off me? Girls do, you know. And they take one or too many of that photograph on the bedside table and decide the shot's not on the board. Oh, my gosh. What am I going to do? Nothing. Leave it with me. I'll have a word with her and straighten everything out. That's awfully good of you, Reggie. What are friends for? Actually, you could do something for me in return. Of course. What? A rather awkward situation has arisen. You know my brother, Ambrose? Hmm. He's sailing too. He's got a contract to write motion picture scenarios in Hollywood. Goodness knows why. Well, he does write novels. Ever read any of his bills? Oh, good heavens, no. That's why I want you to change staterooms with me. Sorry? Did I ever mention to you a girl of the name of Lotus Blossom? The film star? Uh, no. Well, we were once very close. In fact, I asked her to marry me. Really? Yes. I've never seen a girl laugh so much. Uh. Anyway, when Ambrose told me he was going to Hollywood, out of the kindness of my heart, I offered him a letter of introduction to Lottie. And pretty brotherly of me, wasn't it? Met? Well, noticing on his map a broad smile and fancying it was one of those sceptical, I bet if you ever met the girl at all, it was simply in a crowd smirk, so I rather extended myself. Good old Lottie, I said. How we two used to whoop it up together. You know how one does. Hi. Oh, boy. He's engaged to her. Ambrose is? Absolutely. And when I said he must meet her, he said he had met her. And when I said, well, how do you like her? He said he liked her very much and they were engaged to be married. And what precisely had I meant by whoop it up? Dashed embarrassing. Dashed? And then he said that she was sailing too. And I said, holding up as well as I could, that'll be jolly. For whom, he said. Well, for you, I said. Yes, he said. What precisely did you mean by whoop it up? And now we come, old boy, to the very nub of the thing. I took a look at the passenger list and blow me if her stateroom isn't next to mine. Can you imagine what Ambrose will do to me if he finds that out? I'd rather not. Nor would I. So that's why I want to change staterooms with you. 
will you? All right. What does it matter where I sleep? Bless you, my child. 